So, you're thinking about buying a pellet smoker, or maybe you just purchased one, you're gonna wanna check out these eight commonly made mistakes so that you don't make them. Check it out. The first mistake happens in the store, and that's buying too small. The rule in barbecue is always buy 2X. So, if you think you're gonna normally cook uh, four hamburgers, make sure you buy a grill that can fit eight. If you think you're gonna normally smoke two racks of ribs, Make sure you buy a grill that can handle four. It's pretty easy. Once you get into this, you're gonna wanna invite all your friends over to taste the food you're making. The last thing you wanna do is not have enough space in your grill. Now, I made this mistake with my first grill. That was the Weber Smoky Mountain 18 inch. Right after the first cook, I knew I didn't have enough space. So remember, think about the space you're gonna need and get twice as much barbecue. All right, so mistake number two, and that's worrying about temp swings. Now, depending on the kind of smoker you get, whether it's PID controlled or just a timer control, you're gonna see temperature swings. Now, the PID controller should be able to control those swings better than a time-based controller. This Pit Boss back here, the 1100 Pro, is a time-based controller. What that means is the auger is set to turn on for a certain, certain amount of time and feed pellets and then turn off for another set of time, depending on the temperature setting you use. A PID controller monitors the actual temperature inside of your pit and adjusts the feed rate or time of feed to hit the temperature that you've set on your settings. So independent of what kind of controller you have, know that you're going to have temp swings and that's okay. On my pit boss, I see swings of plus or minus 20 degrees sometimes and that's all right. Barbecue isn't an exact science, you just got to get it kind of close to what you need to and wait it out and watch that internal temp. That's the key. Get the internal temp of what you're cooking where you want it and it's gonna be delicious. Mistake number three for any new pellet grill smoker is not subscribing to this channel. I give you everything you need on how to run your pit, really interesting recipes, and some true tried classics. So take a second right now and hit that subscribe button. Mistake number four is not following your startup procedure. Read the manual of the grill you buy. Each one's gonna be a little different, but you're gonna to wanna to turn on your pit and leave this main cover open, right? The purpose there is to uh, let some of the explosive gases that, that develop when you're first lighting your pellets up escape. So if you don't do that, if you leave this closed and you start up your pit, this might happen to you. Now again, what's happening there is when you're first lighting wood, any wood product really, you off gas certain explosive uh, gases. And in this pit, they can um, stay trapped in there. And then when finally you catch fire in your, in your pit, those explosive gases catch and you get a small explosion. So don't forget to follow your startup procedure. All right, moving on to tip number five, and that's stirring your pellets. Now I know one of the beautiful things about pellet smokers is kind of a set it and forget it, right? Set the temperature you want, put your meat on the grill, and kind of walk away from it. But there's this thing called uh, pellet bridging, right? So inside the hopper, your pellets are supposed to automatically feed down to the auger and into your fire pit. But what happens is sometimes the pellets will settle in just the right way where they're kind of supporting themselves up and you create a little void underneath. So then when your controller tells your pit to uh, turn the auger on and feed more pellets, there's no pellets there. So that's pellet bridging. Another form of this uh, mistake that people make is just a void that forms. So your pellets can kind of just sit on the side walls of the hopper and create an empty space, kind of like in this shot right here. And that, that causes the same effect where when the auger turns on, there's no pellets to feed to the fire. Now this can lead to a flame out. A flame out uh, could lead to the explosion we talked about in a previous tip. Or worst case scenario, in my opinion, it could lead to ruining a cook. So make sure you are stirring your pellets. I like to stir mine every 45 minutes or so just to make sure I got a good feed. All right, so now we're on uh, mistake number Mistake six. Here's mistake number six. 
and that's not cleaning out your ash pot. Now, my pellet grill requires that you lift the cooking grates, lift the searing plate, lift the heat deflector, and then vacuum out that ash pot. You're gonna wanna do that before every cook. Now, if, if you're lazy like I am, I, I don't do it every cook, right? Depending on how long the cook was. So, I do a lot of shorter smokes, like deviled eggs or salsa, they don't take about an hour. I'll, I'll do two or three of those before I clean out the ash pot. But if you're doing a long cook, like ribs, or a brisket, or anything that, that's more than like two or three hours, you're gonna wanna clean out the ash pot before your next smoke. Now if you get lazy and you don't clean out your ash pot, again, you're gonna risk a flame out, right? We don't want flame out, because flame out could lead to explosion, it could lead to you ru ruining your cook. So make sure you clean out your ash pot. Now, I did a modification to my pit that makes the clean out much faster. If your pit's like mine, where you need to remove, you know, two, three, four layers of stuff before you can clean it out, at the end of this video, there'll be a link to the modification that I made. It might help you out on yours. I can clean my ash pot out in five seconds, basically. Now, I lift one grate, move something over, and I'm in. So, you're gonna wanna check that out. All right, for those of you still watching, thank you for sticking around. Let's talk about tip number seven, or mistake number seven, rather, that you should avoid, and that's forgetting to clean out your dripping tracks. So on my pit, there's tracks on the front and on the back where all the drippings kind of uh, head towards the pail, uh, as you can see in this clip here. You're gonna wanna clean those out. I clean mine maybe once a month. What, you, what you're trying to avoid is a buildup of grease and debris in those tracks. It hasn't happened to me, but based off what I'm seeing, if you let those tracks build up with too much debris and grease, grease will overflow over the sides and hit the walls in the bottom of your pit. And in my opinion, that's what causes flare-ups, where the grease and debris that's on the sides or the bottom of your pit catches fire. And that, again, in my opinion, leads to what you're seeing in these pictures, where you're damaging the paint on your pit. A lot of folks think it's a manufacturing defect, and I mean, maybe it is, I don't know. But um, I think if you let those tracks build up too much, the grease has nowhere to go, and obviously it's just gonna flow over the side and, and coat the bottom of your pit. So make sure you're cleaning out your dripping tracks. All right, last but not least, mistake number eight. And that's thinking that you're gonna get the same smoke taste that you would out of a stick burner. Now, I was surprised the first time I smoked on my pellet grill, I'd, I'd heard about it, but it's a much cleaner smoke, right? So if you're used to that super heavy smoke taste and you like it, know that it's gonna be different on a pellet grill. The benefits of the pellet grill is kind of that set it and forget it mindset that we talked about earlier. It's a lot easier than managing a fire on a stick burner or a charcoal burner but the taste is different. It's a cleaner smoke. Now, I, I have an opinion that that's probably based off of the quality of the pellets that you buy. Now, I've been using nothing but the Pit Boss brand pellets, and I'm currently in the process of filming a video that tests about, uh, I don't know, four or five different brands to see if there's a difference. So, again, if you haven't hit that subscribe button, now's a good time to do it so you can see the results of that test that I'm doing. But so far, my experience has been that the smoke flavor that I'm getting, although it's there, it's lighter than from my Weber Smoky Mountain. It's lighter than what I'm used to. So be prepared for that when you buy your pellet grill. Now, if you've never smoked anything before, it's not gonna be a problem. You're gonna get a great smoke taste out of your pellet grill. I promise. All right, as promised, right here is the video to how to modify your ash pot for a quick clean out. And right here, once I finish the test, you'll have the video where I test the different pellet brands and see if you get a better smoke. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.